So today's video is going to be a tutorial on this look right here, which is inspired by Doctor Who and the Clockwork Repair Drones. This character was very scary to me when I first watched it, and I think it was such a great look, so I wanted to recreate it in my own rendition interpretation. So I actually had filmed this before, but I had forgotten these little swirly bits, so I decided to refilm it for you guys so that it was totally and 100% accurate and I think that it turned out really great this time around and I hope that you guys like it. If you want to see how I did this look, then let's go! So I started by covering my eyebrows using the glue stick method. There are billions of tutorials on how to do this, but if you want to see the one that I looked at, I will link it in the description box below. Next I took a light colored pencil and I started to sketch out my design. You really want to look at a reference photo during this part just because your look will be more accurate when you have a nice detailed reference photo. Again, I will link the one that I used down in the description box below. This process is a lot of trial and error, so just be patient and do your best to try to be as accurate to the photo as possible. Now that everything is sketched in, we're going to move into the face paint. So I'm taking a white and applying it all over my face, aside from the eye areas and around the jaw. It doesn't matter how opaque this white is because these masks are very old. So actually, the less opaque it is, the more detailed it will be. Now that we're looking a bit like Grumpy Cat, we're going to take a white eyeshadow and set the body paint just so it doesn't move. Next I took the yellow body paint and started going over the small gold details of the mask. I found that this was the best way to approach this because if you start with the red or the blue first, the colors have a higher risk of mixing together, so I recommend starting with the yellow. This is definitely a slow and steady wins the race kind of deal, so just make sure that you try to be patient. And once again, so that the color does not move, I'm taking a golden eyeshadow and setting that body paint. And so now we're going to be tackling the red and the blue face paints. For this, you want to use a smaller brush than I am starting out here that I'm going to switch to because there are a lot of fine details that you really want to make sure that you get into. Again, this is something that is going to take a lot of patience, so just be patient. And here is where I so lovingly drop my eyeshadow palette. Accidentally, of course. Also, if you made some mistakes in the yellow paint, now would be the time that you can cover it up using these various colors, just because now that it is set, it will be able to be covered properly. And so now I'm just taking the blue and applying it to the appropriate area carefully.
Now I'm taking a little bit of white body paint and applying it to the spaces in the upper loops. Now I'm taking a navy pigment and a red eyeshadow and setting the face paint. Now I forgot to turn on my camera when I started this, but basically I'm going to be taking a little bit of brown body paint and creating cracks all over the mask and blending them out with my fingers as I go. This mask is not solid white by any means. It's old and it's cracked, it's vintage looking, and that's what you want to replicate here. And so if any of the cracks end up being a little bit thicker or heavier than you imagined, then just blend them out. Don't worry about it, it'll add a lot of great character. Now I'm going to be taking the black body paint and going around the outline of the mask to replicate their face shape properly. So getting those cheekbones in and all the crisp sharpness of their mask. I'm also taking it down my neck, but if you're cosplaying this, then you won't need to do this. I'm also going into my hairline just to really get that mask effect. And now comes the shading. So I'm going to be taking just a light little brown blush and I'm going to be going softly over certain edges of the mask. You really want to look at your reference photo during this time because they will have your highlights and your shadows and where they should be. And so now I'm taking a darker brown eyeshadow and I'm going to be going over those shaded areas just to add even more depth because you want to start lighter and gradually go darker with these shadows because it'll create a much more realistic effect. And no one really notices this part, but there is a little bit of a lip around the upper edge of the mask, so that's what I'm doing with this eyeshadow. I'm creating that little lip. You can also start defining those creepy ass smile lines. And so now I'm going to be picking up the black eyeshadow and really defining the deep parts of this mask. I'm also using these mainly for the colors because they show up a lot better than it would if it was just brown. But these are just only for the deep parts of the mask. You will notice these in the reference photo. Do not be too heavy handed with black because too much black will ruin the entire mask. So just really be careful. And using that same eyeshadow, I'm going to be outlining the shape of the smile. And here I'm taking that same shadow and really defining the nose contour. And so now we're going to be moving on to the eyes. So I'm taking this black eyeshadow pencil and applying it all over my lids, then spreading it out with a brush just to make sure that it is really crisp and clean. You really want to cover your entire eye, so don't forget your lower lid as well as your upper and lower water lines. And so now I'm taking my trusty black eyeshadow and packing that shit on. Their eyes are so dark and soulless and I really wanted to replicate that. So I'm taking a dense brush and just packing that wherever I put the eyeshadow pencil. Then I cleaned up the edges using a bit more shadow and an angle brush and I also added some shading that I forgot previously. Then I'm taking a bit of bronzer and applying this all over the mask just to add a bit more to the old effect. Now I'm taking a bit of that black body paint and I'm going to be outlining the sides of the mouth. I accidentally did not make these symmetrical and I didn't notice it until right now. So if you're trying this out, make them symmetrical. I tried to make the black body paint more opaque and it didn't go well. I tried to fix it, it didn't work. I tried the other side, it didn't work. So I just stopped for the time being. And I moved on to the lips. So I took a dark red lipstick and applied it to the center part of the lip outline. 
And then I went ahead and deepened the smile lines even more. I took some bronzer and applied a bit of a contour to the mask. Then I took some black body paint and widened up my nostrils since the nostrils on the mask are a bit bigger than mine. Then I also defined these shadows around my nostrils. And I fixed the black face paint using the eyeshadow pencil from earlier, blending it out with my fingers and setting it with a black eyeshadow. I also took this down my neck. And so here is the final look. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love the way that this turned out and I hope you did too. If you liked this video, then please do give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see some more videos, then please hit subscribe. And until next time, bye bye